Welcome to my review of the TiVo Tarantula 3D printer. I bought the printer from Gearbest.com for around $180. Shipping took around 25 days and everything arrived in good condition. The assembly instructions were not very good. It would often happen that the illustration didn't match the instruction. I wanted to assemble the printer only using the included instructions, but I quickly realized that assembly wouldn't be possible and I had to use Google. After about 8 hours of building, the printer was ready. The build for the x-axis was too wide to fit in the idlers, so I had to use a knife to cut a bit of its width. I then leveled the printing bed following some instructions online. At this point I realized that my heated bed was slightly bent, but since it only was about 3 quarters of a millimeter, it didn't really matter. After setting up the software, which was Repetier Host, I was ready to do my first ever 3D print. This is the result. Not very good. It clearly lacks cooling. This is a known issue with the TiVo Tarantula. Right when you get your 3D printer, you're gonna have to print a fan mount. Here you can see the difference between the fan mount printed with and without cooling. I went on to Thingiverse, searching for some fun stuff that I could try and print. I stumbled upon this spare part for the Traxxas Rustler and a gear cover. And I decided to try and print those. The printer did a great job and the parts fit onto the car perfectly. The cables under my table are a huge mess, so I designed this mount so I could place them under my table. It worked and the cables have stayed there ever since. First of all, the build instructions were bad. They use wheels to decrease the amount of noise the printer makes. But why don't they then use V-type aluminum extrusions that are made for these kinds of wheels? It wears the wheels down very fast. I don't like the cable connectors on the main board. They are very flimsy and the cables don't fit in there very nicely. The whole bed flexes very easily and this could have been fixed by just using a wider extrusion in the middle. Also the entire x-axis moves up and down very easily because the y-axis mount is very flimsy. I don't think you could reasonably ask for more when you're only paying $180. It seems that for $180 you can only get a 3D printer that can print in PLA. If you want to use this for anything structural you need something like ABS. That's why I don't really see who this printer is for. You need to be some kind of a DIY type who wants to build the printer himself, but the printer won't be able to do anything other than just printing kind of funny gadgets. I've already sold mine and instead bought an Anycubic i3 Mega. That one can print ABS and nylon, although it costs quite a lot more. So all in all, it's a pretty decent printer when you get it working, but don't expect anything crazy and you won't be able to print it anything else than just PLA. Thank you very much for watching.